Hey, how's it going guys? As some of you might remember, I released my first solo record on November 18th, 2013. It was just over seven years ago. And I just wanted to make a quick video to kind of celebrate that release and the process and all the amazing guests that I had on the release. I know it meant a lot to me personally and it's nothing short of an absolute pleasure to see so many of you guys still listening to the record. So why don't we take a little trip down to memory lane and see how the whole, uh, see how the whole release happened, shall we? Shall we? Now, I wrote this record over a large period of time, right? We're talking like 10-ish years, maybe less, maybe more. I think it gives it a particularly wide range of sonic textures, right? Depending on what I was listening to, how I was feeling in the moment. And during the 10 years, I had so many emotional ups and downs. We're talking like, finished my first college, starting to tour internationally with like multiple bands, sort of becoming a you know professional musician, opening and closing, Two studios in the meanwhile. <laughs> First one was my host studio and the other one was a full-blown stretch studio that I had in Belgrade. Finding the love of my life, auditioning and getting accepted to Berkeley, which was my absolute dream college for years and years since I was like 15. Moving to a different continent to study at said college with all the culture shock and everything. These were quite turbulent times, <laughs> needless to say. Although they all ultimately paved the way for this release. So since Panopticon is an instrumental record for the most part, I felt the need to uh, write this little like note that came with the record to sort of set the mood for the release, right? During my last 10 years of professional music experience, I went through many emotional states. Being in numerous different projects and acts gave me insight into a large scope of personal mindsets, ranging from experiencing the lowest of disapproval and despise to the highest bliss of love and acceptation. Pretty sure I meant acceptance. Don't hold my English against me, it's my second language. This EP's musical realm depicts all those emotions about the world and what they came down to. I look at it as a panopticon, a perfect all-seeing prison where a single guard is omni-observant. The big question stands, are we the guard or the prisoner? I hope this music gets you a bit closer to my innermost world. It's a bit of a thought experiment, isn't it, right? Like, I personally know that many times I feel like I can see each person or each event for what it really is, what it like represents in the grand scheme of things. And at the same time, I also feel absolutely powerless to interact or change anything that I don't like or that I do like, like a prisoner in the, the entire system, right? Like, can you really affect anything? Well, that's the big question. It really has to do with our existence, especially, I mean, these days, it's it's crazy what's happening around the world. Quite often, you just feel like you're you're sort of in a prison. There's no way for you to do anything. You're just sitting in your own cell, yet you're able to see all of this. So hence the question, are we the guard? Are we the prisoner? Maybe a little bit of both. A panopticon is this 18th century prison concept where the designer relied heavily on the prisoner's perception of being constantly watched and you only had one guard who could see every single cell while the prisoners could not see him in the guardhouse. So they would actually have no idea whether they were being watched or not. So since Panopticon got released seven years ago, it found its way to about 100,000 of you guys, which means the absolute world to me. And I did not have great expectations when I released this record. To me, it was more of a thing that I had tumbling around my head for like, a while and I just wanted it out there, right? I wanted to release a solo record. Luckily, it got some great traction once it came out, completely organically to my great surprise, really. In just a couple of days after the release, uh, Greg Kennedy from Metal Injection wrote about Panopticon in their uh, Bandcamp Buried Treasure section, calling me hands down the best composer you never heard of. <laughs> never saw that one coming. Greg, if you're watching, thanks, man. And many, many more reviews good things to say for the for the most part <laughs> another crazy thing that happened is jordan rudas who i'm known just briefly at the time actually ended up buying the cd and messaging me hey alec i just heard fingers painted purple and i gotta tell you i'm extremely impressed but more than being impressed i just really enjoyed it and what i enjoyed about it is from the first second i heard it what you're offering with your music and your guitar playing is something that's very different than what 
most of the people out there are offering. You have a unique sound and unique approach, and your music has interest, and uh, I wanted you to know that. I also wanted you to know that I want you to set me up or turn me on to whoever is making that kind of guitar you use and however you get that sound, because I really love it, and it inspires me to want to play the guitar again. And I think I might have mentioned that to you the first time I met you and you were playing with your fretless guitar, and I love that sustain and all that bending. So we need to talk. Anyway, congratulations. I just bought your album, and uh, say hello to Aaron. Okay. Pretty sure Aaron Bosbrook played him that one. Who am I? Who am I? Who are? Who is Aaron Bosbrook? Actually, who is he? I mean, it, it holds a really special meaning, not just because of our friendship and everything, but also as a record itself. I think, compositionally, musicianship-wise, production-wise, I think it really, like, is like a time capsule that we can just go back and say, like, this is 2010s, and this is what we are up to. It was really genuine and heartfelt, and. It took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears for it to happen, and it holds a really special place in my heart. And right. thank you, and thank you for being there. Like you, you made it all so much better. Finger painted purple. I, I remember being so stuck for so long. I had no idea what to do with it. I knew I wanted like some strings, and I, I just immediately knew that you were the person. Like, okay, this guy's gonna save the song. <laughs> Otherwise, I think there was one part that I couldn't help myself. Here's some leaves. Use it or not, but this is what I heard. And you absolutely pulled the, the, the piece in a totally different direction. The middle, <laughs> the middle part, I had no idea what I was going to do with it. And basically, you came up with that line, and I just harmonized it. Yeah, you saved the piece, really. <laughs> Other than that, I mean, we wrote the arrangements, and we recorded it with people. It was all really smooth. I mean, it, it just plugged in like a puzzle. <laughs> Funnily enough, I think the most challenging thing there was to fight for the volume of what I've done. Like. I want more strings and like no, this is the back one. Like, I want more keyboards. I'm like no, no, no. It's like, you know. <laughs> yeah, join, join the club. Jordan, Jordan said hi. Right, Jordan said, Welcome to the world of keyboardists. I'm like, oh my god. Man, this really, this really brings you back. The amount of just raw talent that all of these guests have is absolutely absurd. Super, super thankful and honestly honored to have each of them on board. Now the drums have a particularly important uh, spot on all of my music, I think, and I just wanted to have a very diverse selection of drummers. I actually recorded uh, a bunch of drums back in Belgrade, including both uh, Yeki and Milos. We're talking 2008, 2010, 2011, and I've recorded drums in so many uh, different sessions and with different drummers that it's uh, it was a bit of a challenge to mix. The first, I think, was the Rhine, which we recorded in the studio in my first college, Advisor in Belgrade. And then Fingers Painted Purple, Sprockets, and Waltz of Titans were recorded in uh, Studio Stretch in Belgrade. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a cookie taste. But a bad cookie. Like a seven-year-old cookie. <laughs> and you and I have a history, like, probably the longest, like... We probably oh. have a couple of histories. <laughs> we literally did two takes of the song. And I remember I gave you maybe, like, Two more takes for the ending, and like that uh, was it. I actually did a playthrough for one of the songs, uh, Sprockets. Right. Right. For that one that was bothering you during the session. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. The, the, of part, course. the part in five, which you were like, yeah, what's, oh, 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 this. <laughs> I mean, you remember, I was like, I can handle this. And then there was the actual recording session, and, and I was like, wow, I thought I could handle this. <laughs> And the high hit goes dun 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 dun. So it's like, it's actually pretty danceable. I could imagine people like, yeah, stuff like that. There would be some pretty weird people, but I'm okay with playing for weird people. With or for, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 that's never a problem. You had three different recording sessions for those three songs, actually. Each was, like, in a different, like, probably in a different year. I've just started the whole stretch thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. it was the first album that we recorded there, the Eschaton, right? You remember that? <laughs> it was the first yes. recording. Yes. Pretty sure we did Fingers Painting Purple. We might have done it on the same setup. But then Sprockets came later. Sprockets was, like, I want to say, like, 2011. It was, like, maybe a year or... A year and a half before you went to Berkeley. I was completely obsessed and frozen stiff with, uh, with the sound of my snare drum that I owned. 
at the time and you remember that it was always weird to me but when you need it you, you nothing can replace it yeah it's it's completely like you just i just drop my hands and it goes like ah. i know that it's one of my favorite snare snare sounds that i've ever gotten <laughs> Micha or Milos? Milos, brother, let it be Milos. Milos, Milos. that's good! <laughs> there, there, there is part of the time at the year when I start listening to some kind of stuff that I like, that I recorded with, with, with brothers like you. And when I hear the Titans, man, it's like... <laughs> Energy, man, I really like like that song. I love it and I, I, I will never forget it, man. I remember we were doing take after take after take, you know, but when I hit it at the, at the end, it was perfect. That that came out that day, and I I, I think it will never come again like like that. I have an album on social medias about that day. It was exactly the 16th February 2011. The name of the album is One Happy Day in Stretch Studio. Ah, <laughs> uh, I remember. I remember yeah, seeing that. My first drum cover. For, for the social medias and everything was recorded at your studio, Stretch. No way! Oh, that's yeah. right, we did Yeah, we did, we did Alba Rosie, right. Alba Rosie, the reggae drum cover. <laughs> Before I worked with you, I've never seen anyone play that fast. Oh, thanks, like, man. Like, just like... <laughs> like so insane. that was the teenage days, that was when only I was a metalhead. <laughs> that same year, like few months in front of the recording day, uh, you you played guitar with the band Tro Tropico at my town, I and mean, I see I, like, I, I like see a brother on the stage, metalhead, you know, with long hair, <laughs> white guitar. <laughs> I was a teenager, and I didn't give a shit about the world. I was like, I want to do everything. I want to travel. I want to do stuff, man. I love you, my dear sweet <laughs> friend. <laughs> It goes both ways, brother. It was an absolute blast to work with both of them. They have entirely different styles and they both bring something completely different to the music. And I, I just love the diversity. But anyway, so I got to Berkeley, started learning like crazy. I mean, the, the amount of information that they expose you to is just like borderline insane. And naturally, I started applying all of that stuff in my writing. Flight Impressions was quite an interesting application, actually. So I attended this uh, writing and communication class with Dr. Douglas Cohn, and he had a great great way of intertwining music into his class because he was aware he was at music school and teaching an English class. It's, it, I think he kind of knew if he held a regular English class, it wasn't going to go great. As a final assignment, he had us uh, read a book by Sherman Alexi called Flight and express ourselves artistically in whichever way we want. And I think this was just an amazing gesture, especially at an art school, a music school, to just give free reign. Here you go. Do whatever you want. Some people wrote, some people drew. Um, I took that week to write a piece of music called Flight Impressions, <laughs> which ended up on the release and which so many of you guys uh, actually really liked. And at this point, I started collaborating with uh, Hadrian Pearson, uh, who was the drummer featured on Flight Impressions. Absolute beast of a drummer. He was part of one of the lineups for the live bands. He actually played drums on the Fingers Painted Purple live playthrough video, and he also played on the Sprockets uh, release party concert. I mean, back then, I didn't know shit about music, but it sounded good, so I liked it. It didn't try to be, like, hip at the time, you know what I mean? It didn't try to copy anything that was really going on at the time. It didn't try to be, like, gent or anything. It still holds up, I think. You know, gotcha, gotcha. Be because it wasn't trying to be something specific, and it was just doing, it was just doing the Alec thing, and then it's, and it's still Alec. The biggest challenge, I think, at first, it was playing with a click track, because I wasn't really used to that. I think that was pretty much the first time I really got to do that, chilling in, a, in a, or in the studio or in the practice room. That's it's still doable, I guess, and you, you you work for it. But then doing the same thing on on the stage. When you have the adrenaline pumping and you, you're like trying to uh, give everything, especially when you get to like the, re the really like loud parts and stuff, you kind of just want to go. Yeah, around. you would have the click in your ears and then nobody else, right? It was like we were like just jamming along to you. Oh, look how look how accurate our drummer is, and you're like, 
<laughs> sweating bullets over here. I can imagine how difficult that may be. Um, it's it's like sort of like this cloud of like reality, like hovering above your head. Like oh, like you're you're early, you're late, you're early, you're right. late. Usually Crazy. early. But, um, yeah, 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 generally. <laughs> Same here. Same here. I'm with you on that. Uh, but it's I didn't know that um, that that was your first time playing with the uh, with the click. That's honestly, I I could not I could not tell. Thinking back on it, you're always like, oh, I could have I could have done it so much better. When you're when you're playing good music and you're also playing with 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 people, people you like to actually hang out with, it's not that common, you know, to find that combination. I think. Yeah. When is the new stuff coming out? <laughs> That's the question, isn't it? Now, as I was getting close to being done with the songs, I started thinking about the visual identity. My instant first choice was my friend Vladimir Lalic, who who also sang in Orion. He's also a world-renowned painter and graphic artist. He does his own exhibitions and all that, like. So Vladimir and his friend Miroslava Djordjevic, also super talented, by the way, sort of tag teams the visual aspect. Vladimir did the cover, while Miroslava did the AD logo. Obviously, super happy about how it turned out. I love it. I love it to this day. Plus, I thought it was an absolutely amazing opportunity to have Vladimir as both the singer and a graphic designer in one. What more could you ask for from an artist? You want to sing? You want to draw something for me? I yelled, I, I screamed, I like did everything I want to do with my voice. <laughs> so it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's always with us. I mean, just the first versions of the Rhine was great gu guitar hero bullshit. That's right, that's right, that's right. Big time Guitar Hero bullshit. Big that was the working title for bullshit. that song for yeah, like yeah, the yeah. longest time. Insane. So, <laughs> I actually yeah. forgot about that. So, so you were smart enough not to make another Guitar Hero bullshit, then you, you, then you call the vocalist and then it's not <laughs> a Guitar Hero anymore. It's a vocal <laughs> hero bullshit right now. <laughs> it's still bullshit. <laughs> still bullshit, but there's vocals, so yeah. When I started writing lyrics, it reminded me somehow of that post-war traumatic syndrome, what uh, the, the, the song tells about, and uh, word by word and worse by worse, somehow it came, came to have the whole story of that, you know, coming back home from, from war and just uh, figuring out that everything that you do reminds you of that, and, you know, it's a war by itself just getting out of that, you know, post-traumatic syndrome, and uh, yep. I'm pretty pleased how it all turned out, especially with your uh, Soldier, get your ass on the stage and dance! <laughs> you know, like, the, <laughs> we even had the evil general that, yeah. that was your evil doing. General. Our collaboration, it's always easy. I mean, I don't know if it was really a, like a problem, like, ah, oh, you should do like this kind of vocals, and I was like, fuck you, I like, I want to do like this, you know. <laughs> we just ever do uh, everybody our own stuff, and we're pretty, pretty pleased, you know, how it all Yeah, we did, we did get along, didn't we? That's right, yeah. that's right. I still keep it in a special place because I did like the cover and everything and uh, uh, my vocals are there so much time spent together and I'm always happy to have that kind of release just hanging around in my flat and just reminding me of good times and you know good creativity that that was pouring out now one of my very favorite spots on the record is actually a spot with no guitar just a few instruments sort of very sparse and it features this beautifully vibrant flute solo from a dear friend of mine from berkeley Mila Najancevic. Actually, it was great. I, you know, I know you, so I knew that you're doing some awesome things and I was super down to do it. And uh, uh, actually, it was I really honored that I Aww. played on your record. Thank yes. you. I remember uh, coming to record and uh, I remember we did many, many takes <laughs> until we get the right sound, right? Those yeah. magical sound. Uh, and I remember you talking to me about birds and about all the story that's behind it. And so yeah, it was it was a great great experience. I love right it. On. I love it. Right yes. I don't think we ever spoke about it really. Like after we did it, it was just yes, like we kind of yeah. did it. It was a great session. Yeah, yeah. We talked a lot. I remember we talked a lot of, uh, during the session. Uh, we talk about this um, magical um, experience after the tune, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Actually, it's a, it's between you told break, me it's really. gonna be like a break between the tunes. That's right. That's and right. It, and that you need like something magical. So I was trying to imagine that in my head. How how would be to to find myself actually visual in the fields, 
you know. So I had my picture of, uh, of that. Oh, at the end, I think you choose right stakes. And, oh, beautiful. Um, okay. At, at the end, what I care now, you know, and uh, it's it, it's like yeah. You you did right choice to to make the, the things really nice. You made that easy though. If you hadn't played it, I would have nothing to pick out of. So then actually, when I uh, heard an, an entire record, and um, not just uh, Waltz of Titans, but the, all the so other songs, and then I found okay, I I understand this artistic uh, movement of yours. So. I, I found my place very good, so Absolutely. I'm really Thank honored you. to be part of your record and yeah, I will totally do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Yes, Thank you so much. Yes, well, yes. I was so happy that you're on it. Well, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, really. All right, so one last story. Spiral of Sanity. Right around the time that I started being serious about releasing a solo record, I started this exclusive Facebook group of my like core fans. I'm sure some of the guys are gonna recognize some of the stuff that I covered in this video, but when we started nearing the release date, I was just getting done with Spiral of Sanity. Spiral of Sanity was like the last song that I did. It's like the youngest song on the record. Except it wasn't called Spiral of Sanity yet. I had a couple of ideas, but nothing was really hitting home, you know? And I thought to myself, hey, why don't I like ask the people from the Facebook group to help me name the song and that's exactly what we did. The guys had some great ideas. Mental Outcast, it could have been Mental Outcast. Or Soul Shifter, that was my idea. Exiled Mind, that's a, from a friend of mine from Serbia. Tainted Soul, River Plains, Mind Waves, Permanent Dreams, Colonial Dust. All these, are, there's some pretty good names in here. And all of us in the group kind of collectively voted on uh, Spire of Sanity. It was a close call though. It's a great name, I gotta say. Interestingly enough, the person who came up with the name is actually my first ever guitar teacher from Serbia, Boško Martinović. The idea came from uh, the album title. Uh, the loss of sanity is uh, very probable <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the Panopticon prison, I guess. So it, the track felt dark and uh, intense. The, the progressions reminded me of a spiral. So. I think there is even a term in uh, psychology, uh, the the downward spiral of uh, of sanity, of reason. Maybe other others had uh, different ideas. I don't know. I think I interpreted it as um, sort of like an upward spiral. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like so, it's like yes, you can spiral down, but you can also spiral upwards. Yeah, right? like it's yeah. like okay, you become like happier and happier and happier. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> once you start spiraling, you can end up like anywhere, really. Yeah, you're so imaginative, though. Like I, I didn't realize that you connected it with uh, with the whole like uh, with the album name and everything. That's awesome. Yeah. Just a while ago, I listened it uh, listened to it again, and uh, I think I think it stands well today. Probably I'm to blame for you that you're listening to metal and that kind of music. It's oh. not it's not about guitar. I, I just pushed you over the edge. So you're, yeah, you're, yeah, you're you're kind of right you about that. You introduced me. So, Iron yeah. Maiden, Bruce Dickinson. All right, here's a little bit of Megadeth. Yeah, here's yeah, Metallica. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's all it's all here. <laughs> I had someone push me down <laughs> down the stairs as well. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, well, you know what? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for pushing me uh, down. This I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> anytime, mate. Anytime. I feel super honored that you were that you were the you know the godfather uh, of, of the song oh, in, in, in so many in so many ways, right? Like it's and yeah, I love that we voted um, on, on on that name in particular. So that's that's awesome. Yeah, I was, I was so surprised. Yeah. And speaking of a spiral of sanity, you might actually wonder why like, there's no guests on it. Well, the short of it is that I had Aaron Marshall from Minerals um, sort of all set for that uh, for that spot, but somehow the logistics didn't work out. I think uh, it was crunch time, and he just couldn't make it on time, unfortunately. So I ended up doing that crazy synth solo that. It's kind of like a weird one-off on that record, just because it was so like open and like last minute, and I was like, wait, I gotta do something. Everybody thinks it's a keyboard for some reason, but it's not, it's a guitar. Now it's time for the for the real star of the show. This is Puffy. This is my first Wood Gorilla custom guitar that they made for me. This this one and I, we go, we go way back. We're talking like Tropico band times. She was uh, featured prominently, prominently on this record. Absolutely beautiful instrument, seven string, neck through. Uh, with the Floyd Rose system with the PSO pickups in it and it features these great pickups from uh, This Slovakian company it is no longer in business. I used these pickups before I switched over to Fishman 
And yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful instrument. Half of the body is mahogany. The second half is sort of split between flame maple and uh, this beautiful poplar top. And it has an absolutely wonderful, wonderful tone. I still play this a lot, but these days I kind of gravitate more towards the eight string. But yeah, this, this was this, uh, we spend long sleepless nights, me and this one. Yep. It's puffy. Right after I released Panopticon, my wife and I actually produced several videos to accompany the release and to help with promotion and everything. Since Ivana was finishing her master's degree at Emerson College, we were lucky enough to often have a chance to use the Emerson soundstage at Paramount Theater, which resulted in some great, great videos for all of you to enjoy. Um, and I just could not be more thankful for all the different crews that we had on these uh, videos and all our Emerson and Berkeley friends who were selfless and gracious enough to help us out at the time. Later on, I wanted to sort of capture all the ideas that were on the record and uh, make a transcription book, which we ended up doing. Uh, my friend uh, Daniel Martinez Del Campo did an excellent job transcribing everything. Um, I sure wish I uh, filmed my process like I'm doing now. With the way that I write, it's a little bit complicated to sort of retrieve the information that was put down in a sonic form. I kind of tend to hit record and go for it and see what I like afterwards. There's all these different ways that you can play these phrases and uh, yeah, it was definitely a challenge to find the actual fingerings that I used on the record. I think there might be some spots which are wrong, so we might have an amended, uh, an amended version at some point, but we'll see. So there you have it guys, uh, thanks for watching, and more importantly, thanks for listening. So, so many of you listened to this record, it had opened so many wonderful opportunities for me, and more importantly, it gave pleasure to so many of you guys, which I could not be happier about, really. That, that's really what it's, what it's all about, right? So thank you again, uh, I think it's a wonderful community that we've built. I sincerely hope that this next release is not going to disappoint anyone, and that it's, uh, it's gonna be a continuation of this same journey. So thanks again for watching. I'm gonna go change and keep working on the studio because the thing is not gonna build itself. And hopefully the next episode that you see on here is gonna be Studio Overhaul Part 5. And we're gonna get that much closer to getting it done. There's quite a bit more work to do, but I'm seeing the, I'm seeing the end of it, which is great. I can't wait, honestly, I can't wait to finish the record once I finish the studio. You gotta finish one thing to finish the other. So super stoked about that. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao!